No, John. Like fashion in video games. Oh. So, does that mean I need to go back to the chair? Yeah, you do. Okay. Fashion has become a pivotal feature in gaming over the past few years, as players scrounge to find one iota of uniqueness and search for it in the clothes of their digital characters. Almost every game released of recent has given its players some agency over the look of their character. Even games known for their protagonist's distinct feel have began to give leeway in this sense, allowing curious fans to finally uncover the mystery that the Mario series has been holding for years. Does Mario have nipples? The answer is, um, yes, and it's a little weird. Fashion in gaming follows fashion in the real world, as they're both represented by three differing categories. These being functional fashion, fashionable fashion, and purchasable fashion. Functionable fashion is fashion with a purpose. It's like the suit you wear to a job interview. It doesn't look good, it doesn't feel good, and oh, it doesn't even smell good. But it does make you look 65 years old, and I guess that's what interviewers like to see in their social media manager applicants. Functional fashion appears in games like Dark Souls, where I often find myself forgetting about what my armor looks like, and I rather just end up putting on whatever gives me the best stats, which comes out to me looking like an idiot, but I'm an idiot who deals three extra hit points. Hell yeah. But function doesn't just lie in the mismatching of armor. It can also be found in very good looking fashion statements like how certain outfits in Ghost of Tsushima give Jin a wide variety of skills that can allow you to play the game tailored your way. Some give you an enhanced ability to locate loot and collectibles, some allow you to stealth better, and some even allow you to make your foes cower and run in fear, similar to some of the outfits that I wear. Fashionable fashion is fashion with the sole purpose of looking fly as heck. Uh, n no cap. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means. In the real world, that just means wearing whatever makes you feel cool. For me, that's wearing a hoodie under a sweater. But for you, that might be wearing a white t-shirt with rootin' tootin' written on it in Sharpie and the sleeves cut off. I don't know. You gotta do, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever's best for you. On, uh, you do, you gotta do you. In these games, it's the same. Does it feel cool to have Mario running around as Pixel 64 Mario? Go for it. Want to give Arthur Morgan an unkempt head and beard hair? Go for it, partner. Want to wear overalls in Stardew Valley because you just love to watch that Nebraska corn grow? Do it. Want to turn Rick from Rick and Morty into a pickle? Stop. That's too far. You can't do that. Okay, go ahead. The amount of free customization some games give you can be cool to scroll through, and deciding what shirt to put on my character might not impact gameplay, but it definitely makes them feel more like me. In Spider-Man and Ratchet & Clank, it not having an impact on gameplay encourages players to wear whatever makes their character feel like an extension of themselves. Purchasable fashion, because what's better than flaunting daddy's money in real life? Flaunting daddy's money? in a video game. In real life, this is Gucci belts, Supreme shirts, things that don't provide any stat bonuses, but do provide clout bonuses to all those nine-year-olds who give a crap. And it's the same in video games, as you might think your $700 Valorant knife looks so cool, but I'm drawing penises with bullets, who's the real cool guy now? But I am also guilty of purchasing a skin here and there but never to flaunt it at other players, rather because I'm a big Star Wars dork and I wanted the Kylo Ren skin in Fortnite because he's a wide boy and he's cranking 90s and honestly, I can relate. When you know what you are going to get in a game, skin purchases can be a good system to allow players to play for free and only pay if they feel like it. It has also been cool to see the crossovers that have come from these systems in games like in Fortnite and Fall Guys. But not all these systems are good as loot boxes and NFTs attempt to exploit the player's desire for high fashion and ruin everyone else's fun. Fashion has been a driver of innovation for hundreds of years to make people look richer or cooler or tougher. Now that we are long past the days of the French fur trade, we can see the final evolution of fashion. Fashion in video games. Its three unique types though have held true throughout history, whether they were digital or physical. And finally, as we discovered today, fashion in games... Um... It's in them.